The best tortillas are the homemade tortillas. Welcome back to my kitchen. And the next page in our taco manual is one of the most essential pages. It's the recipe for corn tortillas. And let's face it, your taco's only as good as the tortilla that you wrap it in. So I'm gonna show you how to make corn tortillas from scratch at home with masa that's either dehydrated or fresh. I'm gonna show you the whole thing, but let's just talk about what is corn masa that you use for making the corn tortilla. First of all, it starts with field corn. That is this stuff here. This is a olotillo corn from the southern part of Mexico. This is not dehydrated sweet corn. It's a grain corn, and that is what you used to make the corn tortillas, but it's not just ground up. So you can't really call this stuff that comes in this package as cornmeal because it's first processed and it's processed with an alkali bath. Um, they put the stuff that they call cal or mineral lime into the water and boil the corn for a short period of time, let it sit overnight, and then it is stone ground in these beautiful mills all over Mexico. It's not a, a, a substance that you can keep for long periods of time. So they'll take that paste that comes out of the mill and dehydrate and powder that, and that's what you'll find in your grocery store. So I have two different kinds of masa harina, or masa flour, not corn flour, but masa flour here. The one that you can find pretty much everywhere is the Maseca brand, and then our friends at Masienda are making heirloom corn masa harina, which I highly recommend because you're gonna get flavor Let's face it, Maseca is distributed all over Mexico, so there's no regional flavor to it. It's made that way, whereas Masienda is capturing the regional flavors of Mexico and offering to them to you in your kitchen. So I'm gonna do my basic recipe here, which is going to be a cup and three quarters of masa harina. I'm gonna start with that and then we're gonna compare the consistency with fresh ground masa, which I have for you here as well. So I've got my, this is a cup and a half, and then I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cup more there. And then the next ingredient is water. So we're gonna to go to the sink and I'm gonna get really hot tap water. So I want to make sure that this is as hot as my tap water gets. Someplace in that 130 degree temperature would be good. And you want a generous cup. It's really about a cup and two tablespoons. And I'm going to add that in here. And then I am just going to mix it all together. There's many different ways to mix this, spoons, forks spatulas, whatever you want, but there's nothing really better than your fingers to work the water into the dried masa. Now, consistency is super important here. So don't just go by the measurements that I gave you because it will change all the time depending on the humidity in the air. I'm seeing that this is gonna come out like really dry. So I'm just gonna step back to the sink and I'm gonna put some more water into it um, so that I can get it to the right kind of consistency. This seems like it was quite, quite dry, this mix. Now, another thing that I will tell you, when you're working with masa, um, water goes a long way. So when you say, oh, this needs just a little touch more moisture, you put in a tablespoon and it might feel like all of a sudden it's gotten too soft. Okay, so just go a little bit at a time as you're working all of this together. Now the one wonderful thing about working with this heirloom corn 
is that it has a way, way more aromatic character to it. So compared to, say, the Maseka there, um, this will be a real pleasure to work with. Okay, so look at what I've got here. A lot of people would say, oh yeah, that's right, it holds together. Um, so it's probably right. This is what I would consider that consistency more like of Play-Doh. Um, it's pretty stiff, but we want our masa to actually be a little bit softer than that. So I'm going to add, I add a little bit of just regular tap water at room temperature over here so that I could kind of add that to it. And I'm going to add it just not even a tablespoon at a time until I get it to, to this soft consistency. Now I have taught making of tortillas for years. And I will tell you that the number one thing that people do is work with a masa that's too stiff because they say that, oh, it's really stiff is going to be easy to work with. Yeah, but your tortillas are going to be dry and crumbly. So when I get this set now almost to the consistency that I want it to be. I'm going to put a towel over the top of it and let it sit for about 20-30 minutes to completely rehydrate and then I'll meet you back here to show you the forming and the baking of the tortillas. It's been about 15 minutes uh, since we added the hot water to this masa harina. Um, and what I have in this bowl here, obviously you can see the difference in color, but this is white corn that was made as fresh masa. So this was started as the whole kernel corn cooked in the alkali bath, let set overnight, and then stone ground this morning. This came from our restaurant and it was made to the perfect consistency with a little bit of water by someone on our staff that has made tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of tortillas over the years. So this is going to be my benchmark. I'm going to get this masa to match this one in consistency. Right now, if I touch this one, um, it feels a little stiffer than this one. So I'm going to add a little bit more uh, water to it. Again, you see I'm going very light in it because a little water goes a long way when you are working with masa. Okay, I'm going to say that this pretty much matches the other one now. So let's talk about the difference. Clearly, the masarina is very easy for people because you can keep this on your shelf in your kitchen and grab it at any time. This masa, you have to go to a tortilla factory to get it and you want to buy it the same day that you're going to work with it because it will spoil pretty fast. I will tell you that you can refrigerate it, but the best tortillas will, be, will come from room temperature masa. So most of you will be working with this masa harina that has been reconstituted. And I write all of my recipes for either so that whichever is the right one for you, um, it can be a con a used in the recipes. Okay, so now I think I've got the same consistency here. Um, this one's a little bit softer, I mean a little bit stiffer, but we're gonna work through it and see what happens because we're gonna make tortillas with both of them. This is gonna give you I will say the lightest, freshest flavor. And the masarina will give you a slightly different texture. Both are good, both are worth doing. Okay, so we've got a tortilla press here. This is one of the Oaxacan ones, um, also sold by our, our friends at Masienda. It's a really beautiful piece to have at home. But many of you will probably have a cast iron or a cast aluminum tortilla uh, press, and those around the Oaxacan ones, for some reason, are always square. So you open that up, and you want to cut two pieces of plastic to go in here. These are cut from vegetable bags from the grocery store. Um, a little bit thicker than this is a little easier to use if you are starting this for the first time. You'll take about a walnut size piece of the dough. It was a little bit big there. Roll it between your palms and put one, put the ball down on one piece of the plastic that is covering the bottom plate of the tortilla press. Then you will put the other piece of plastic on top and press the ball down. Then you will close this press 
and you'll give it a gentle press. Now you're not putting your whole body weight into this because it will be so thin if you do that that you won't be able to unmold it. So give it a gentle press and open it up and let's take a look. It should be around four and a half, five inches, something like that. It's a really good size to start with the first time that you're making tortillas. Flip it around 180 degrees, co close the press and give it a gentle press again. That will just even it out. The more even your tortilla, the more likely it is to press a, uh, to puff up like pita bread. Then pull off that top sheet of plastic. And this is the part that takes some dexterity in getting used to. You are going to use your hand and line up the top of the tortilla with your, your top finger there. And then you are going to just drape the tortilla over your hand and you are going to, to let it uh, dangle like that. Then we're going to go over to a griddle heated to sort of a medium on one side, medium high on the other. And then we are going to get it off of our hands. Now, most of the time people would think you would just roll it off this way. It will always be wrinkled. If you do that, you do, this is the standard Mexican procedure in most places in Mexico. You will catch the tortilla on the griddle like that and roll your hand out from underneath it. One little break there on the side, but otherwise it came down just right. Let's go back through that again while this is uh, baking on that, that cooler side of the griddle. But this time, why don't we take the, I'm going to make a two colored masa thing here because I've got a lot of the yellow on my fingers here, but let's take the masa that is fresh ground corn masa here and take our walnut size piece in the middle, put the plastic on top and press it down, close it and give it a gentle press, open that up, flip it around and I keep wanting to do it before I close there and then give it a gentle press again, open it up. Well, that didn't work at all. So let's just start. One nice thing about masa is you can just re-roll the ball. It's not at all like anything that is flour. Um, and this will happen to you from time to time. Um, press that down again. I'm going to give it a gentle press down. Flip it around and press it again. Now, what we'll notice before I get to that, I have to flip this. Okay, what you'll notice is that it starts to dry around the outside and it will release itself from the griddle. If it's still sticking to the griddle, you know that it is um, not ready to be turned yet, but you don't want to go too long on this either. So I'm going to take it and flip it over onto the hot side of the griddle and we're going to let that bake for about 60 seconds. It'll be someplace between 30 and 60 seconds depending on the temperature of my griddle. Uh, pull the top plastic off here. I'm going to unmold it onto the, my hand but I am again lining it up with my top finger there and then peeling off the plastic so that it dangles there. Come over to the griddle and lay this down onto the griddle like that and that keeps it in together. Now, one of the things I noticed is that the consistency of the fresh ground masa is um, more pliable. The masarina one is a little less pliable and will have a tendency to stick just a little bit or break just a little bit, not stick just a little bit, but break just a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to see if we got this, if we get any kind of a puff here. Okay, my second flip on the yellow corn tortilla has given us just little bubbles all over the surface of it. We're going to get ready to do the second flip now on the one that is made from fresh 
ground masa. And of course the Holy Grail is a completely puffed one. But even people who are like long-term tortilleras that taught me everything that I know, they don't even get it on every single one. So we want to get a little browning going on like that. We got a little puffing which will make it a lighter consistency tortilla. You can see that this one is puffing really nicely here. It hasn't gotten the full puff, the full pita-like puff, but it's doing really nice nicely it's coming up and, and that's kind of what we're looking for okay so I'm going to set these there that the cooking isn't completed here on the griddle. It is actually completed when you put it into a, a basket with a towel. And as you're making your tortillas, you just open up the towel and put them in here, stacked one on the other, and let them just steam. So they may be a little crispy in some places on the edges, but that'll all go away as they're steaming here and finishing it. Okay, so there's several things that you need to know. When you are working with your Masa, and you press out your first tortilla. The edges of that tortilla should be smooth. That is really critical. That is what will tell you if the consistency of your masa is right or not. So when you, un when you pull the top sheet off, if the edge, and I'm going to ask you to come in and look, is really rough here, then you know that it's too dry. If it's smooth like what you see here, you know it's the right consistency. That's number one. Number two, you have to get this motion down of how to get that tortilla off of your hand. Some people are just kind of natural at it. Other people are not. Um, so let me just show you how, how I always encourage everybody to work with this is unmold it onto your hand because you're working with masa and it's very easy to work with. Unmold it. Again, I'm lining it up with the top finger there. Unmold it completely and then do it on a, on, on a, a work surface like this. So learn how to roll that out so that you get it unwrinkled onto the work surface. And then you can just pick it up and keep working with the same ball of dough until you get it exactly right and you feel really comfortable over at the griddle here. When you get to this point, lots of people think they're gonna burn the back of their hand, their little finger there, and so they jerk like that. And of course, it just folds the tortilla over on itself. And you have to let that one sit for a little while until it releases itself and then throw it in the trash because you can't really use that tortilla. Now, a lot of people have trouble with getting the temperatures right here. When you put it down on the cooler end of the griddle, you may see a bubble or two, but it shouldn't really bubble up at all that at that point neither should you leave it too long just a little drying around the edge and just that the moment that it releases itself from the griddle is the moment you flip it over you notice that i'm doing it in typical mexican style with my hands you don't have to. You can use a, a spatula to do that, a metal spatula to help you through all of that sort of thing. Once you have flipped it onto the hotter side and you let it sit there for a few seconds, well, I'm say 30 to 45, 50, 60 seconds um, to brown a little bit underneath and then you give it the second flip, at that point, you wanna tickle it just a little bit, meaning that you wanna press down on it and that will help that, that sort of puff to start and you will get a better textured tortilla out of it. So those are little tricks that you need to know to be an expert tortilla maker. Just know that it's one of those dexterity things. And after you do it for a while, you'll feel really comfortable with it. But just like making bread the first time, it feels so foreign. So just know that, just keep after it, doing it time and time again. And I think you'll agree with me that the best tortillas are the homemade tortillas. Okay, so you saw me go through all of the steps of making great corn tortillas at home. Now I'm going to introduce you to someone who makes them for a living and absolutely makes them perfect. I'm a rank amateur compared 
to the hands that you see working here. But I'm just going to go over all of the steps so that you can see it's all still the same. You see that the pressing out is exactly what I showed you. There's no trick to that. But then when it's unmolded and then it gets laid down, did you see that movement? pulling the, the hand out from underneath the tortilla like that. So this is the coolest part of the griddle, just like what I explained to you at, back at my house. And then things get flipped over once and then flipped over a second time. And you can see that these are just starting to puff gloriously up to that level of being just like pita bread. So it's exactly what I showed you, but you can also see that this is sort of a lifelong process of perfection. And when you get one like this, that's been completely puffed, this is that same heirloom corn masa that I was working with back at my house. There is nothing like it. Now, you know that these don't have any fat in them. They don't have any salt in them. And there's no gluten in them. Corn tortillas are about the healthiest thing on the planet. And one of the reasons that we season everything so much in the Mexican kitchen is because these don't have any salt in them. They don't have any fat in them. So just like in Chinese food with unsalted white rice, you really develop the flavors quite boldly so that then they will contrast with the daily bread. Now it's time for you to get to work.